Hey kids, welcome to Online Super Church. Today, we will be studying in the book of Titus. If you have any questions about our Bible lesson today, or if you would like to get in contact with me, email me at the email address on your screen. Before we jump into today's Bible lessons, let's sing a few songs to the Lord. In our Bible lesson today, we will read from the book of Titus. Titus was a letter written by Paul to a young man with that name, Titus. But it also has a lot of good stuff to help us in our life today. And that is why God allowed it to be included in the Bible. Now, right from the beginning of the book, there are some really important things that we can learn. Let's start reading today and see what God wants for us to learn from the letter to Titus. Look at verse number one. Paul, 
a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. First we see, Paul begins to describe himself. Now Titus already knew who Paul was, but it was important for our sake that we see who Paul was. When Paul wrote this letter to Titus, he started by stating that he was a servant of God. Often when I send a letter or an email, I'll sign my name at the bottom, Pastor Scott. It's my job and my title. Well, Paul would also give his title in the next phrase, but the first phrase he said was that he was a servant of God. What does it mean to be a servant? A servant is not the boss. They're the worker. They work for the boss. A servant does not get to decide what he wants to do. He is required to do what the boss tells him to do. And a servant is not a leader unless the boss makes him a leader. At our church, Greater Portland Baptist Church, our senior pastor and my boss is Dr. Rick Adams. He tells me what to do. Nine years ago, when I started working at the church, Pastor Adams told me to help in the super church with the kids. So I did. Then he told me to take over the kids ministry as the kids pastor. And I did. Sometimes he tells me to do other things like teach a Bible lesson to adults or run a lunch for our grandparents. And sometimes it might be other things like taking down the flags outside when it's really windy so that they don't get destroyed by a storm. My boss, Pastor Adams, gets to tell me what to do because he's the boss, I'm the servant. Paul told Titus that Paul was a servant. But who did he serve? He served God. Paul recognized that God was his boss, and he was just a worker. Now, you might think it would be an easy thing for Paul to be a servant, but I think sometimes it was not so easy to be a servant. Sometimes he wanted to do things his own way. Let me show you what the Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse 37. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. Paul had to leave his friends and he would never see some of them again. That would be hard. But Paul was not the master. He was the servant. God was the master, and God had told him to leave because there was another mission he needed to do. We see also in Acts 21, verse 11, And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, and bound his own hands and his feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. This means that Paul was going to be arrested if he went to Jerusalem. And all of his friends told Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. We don't want you to be arrested, Paul. But God had called Paul to go. And God was the master. Paul was the servant. Look at what Paul said in verse 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem 
for the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, I'm sure Paul did not want to die, but if God's plan was to send him to Jerusalem to die, Paul was ready. Paul was the servant. God was the master. So Paul started his letter this way as a reminder to Titus and to help us today to remember to be a servant of God. God is in charge, and we are responsible to do as he says. Well, then Paul describes himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. The word apostle means an ambassador or a messenger. The word apostle is not used much today, except when we talk about the few in the Bible who were sent out by Jesus to be his special messengers. It's a special word used. But even though we are not apostles like Paul, every one of us is an ambassador for Christ. Take a look at what 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 says. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So what does an ambassador do? An ambassador is someone who goes to another country to talk with their leaders in the place of a king or president. For instance, any time the U.S. needed to really talk with the United Kingdom or Great Britain, it would be really hard for President Trump or now President Biden to get on an airplane and fly to England. So instead, President Trump asked Ambassador Woody Johnson to go to London and be there to talk with the governor if he needed to. He was acting in the place of the president. Now this picture here is of the new embassy in London where Ambassador Woody Johnson would work when he was in London. Being an ambassador to London is a very important job. In fact, it was so important that there were five men who were ambassadors to Great Britain who later became president of the United States. They were John Adams, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Martin Van Buren, and James Buchanan. There were other presidents of the United States who were also ambassadors to other countries before they became the president. Thomas Jefferson was an ambassador to France, and George H.W. Bush was an ambassador to the United Nations. So being an ambassador is a big deal. They talk for the president. Some of them did their job so well that they became the next president. Well, Paul says that he is an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And we are also ambassadors for Jesus. So what does that mean for us? Well, an ambassador for Jesus says the words that Jesus would say. The first responsibility of any Christian is to give the message of Jesus Christ to other people. It is so important In fact, it was so important to Jesus, it was his last command, the Great Commission. He gave it last so that no one would forget it. He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But there are more words that an ambassador for Jesus should say. How about words of kindness, 
Words like, thank you. Words like, I love you. Or, can I help you? Words like, you are doing such a good job. These are called edifying words. And look what Romans says about edifying words in chapter 15. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. In Psalms, we are instructed to use words that are acceptable to God. Look at what it says in Psalm 19. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We could spend the rest of our Bible lesson looking at Bible verses about good words we should say. But they all point to this one thought. We are ambassadors for Jesus, and we speak the words that Jesus would say. So make sure that you are using good words. But an ambassador also has things that they will do. We should ask the question, what would Jesus do? Well, the Bible tells us what Jesus did. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus was known for doing good. He was led by the Spirit of God to those in need, and he helped them. Are you a helpful child? Do you help your classmates at school? Do you help your parents at the house? Do you help other people? When Paul described himself, there were two things that he said would describe him. He was a servant of Jesus, and he was an apostle or an ambassador for Jesus. How would you be described? Well, after describing himself, Paul then gives an awesome promise, the promise of eternal life. Look at verse number two. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. What is eternal life? And how does someone get eternal life? Eternal life is forever in the presence of God with no sin, no sadness, and no punishment for sin. One of the biggest punishments for sin is pain. I have a friend right now who has cancer and it hurts in his whole body. I've had other friends who had a brain aneurysm and now they're in a wheelchair for the rest of their life. I have another friend who was in a car accident and broke her back and now she cannot walk. All of these pains are because of sin in this world. Our body is falling apart because of sin. But eternal life will have no more pain and no tears. Look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Paul tells Titus that he has hope of eternal life. He knew that when he died, he would be with Jesus Christ forever 
in heaven. He knew because God had promised it. Now, probably the most famous verse in the whole Bible is John 3.16. Look at what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The requirements to have everlasting life are very simple for us humans, because God did the hard part. As Paul said in our verses, before the world began, God had a plan to give us eternal life. God knew people would not be worthy of eternal life because we all sin. Look at Romans chapter 3, what it says in verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And in verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every person has sinned, you who are watching today, and me. Your sin may be bigger or smaller than my sin, but we all have sin. And all of our sin deserves God's punishment, which is death and separation from God in hell. We read in Romans chapter 6, for the wages of sin is death. In Revelation 20, we read, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. But before the world was even created, God made a plan to save you from your sin that he knew you would do. That plan was for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to leave heaven and die on the cross to take away your sin and mine. His dying on the cross was a payment for us. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, we read, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Because Jesus took our sin and nailed it to the cross, it will no longer keep us out of heaven. We can have hope of eternal life in heaven because of what Jesus did. And he gives it to us as a free gift if we will accept him. Look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Paul accepted that gift of salvation when he was on the road to Damascus, so he knew he had eternal life. Titus accepted that gift of salvation when Paul came to his town to preach. I have accepted that gift of salvation also. For me, it was on Wednesday night, December the 20th, of the year 2000. That was 20 years ago. Maybe today someone is watching this video who has never accepted the gift of salvation, but they might want to do that today. I know there are a few kids watching today who need to ask Jesus to be their savior. If you would like to ask Jesus to be your savior, 
you can pray this simple prayer of faith right now. And if you believe in Jesus, he will save you too. You could pray. Dear Jesus, I know that I am an evil, nasty sinner. I am sorry for my sin. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sin, and I believe you came back alive again because you are the Son of God. I ask you to please forgive me and come into my life and save me and make me clean in my heart from sin. Now Paul described himself as a servant and as an apostle. Then Paul described eternal life. Finally today, we will see Paul describes how to know God. Now sometimes people will go out into the forest and meditate and they think that if they do that, they will know God better. But that's not how you get to know God. Paul tells Titus how to get to know God better. It's really pretty simple. You know God better by reading the Bible and from the preaching of the Bible. Look at what it says in Titus 1 verse 3. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. If you want to learn more about God, you need to listen to the Bible and Bible preaching. A preacher is the most important job in the whole world. If a preacher does not preach the message of God, the people will not learn about God. If he does teach the right message about God, then the people can know God. There's nothing else as important in the whole world than to know and to love and to serve God. But do you know what is awesome about the job of being a preacher? Anyone can be a preacher and tell others about Jesus. Now, being a pastor of a church is different than being a preacher, and we'll look at that next week about what it means to be a pastor. But every person who knows Jesus as their Savior and who has a Bible can be a preacher, including you. Now, last week, I was at a park with a boy from our church. He was seven years old, and he was playing with a little girl on one day and a little boy on the next day. And when it was time to leave the park, I asked Brandon if he had invited the little boy to come to church yet. Well, he quickly turned to the little boy and asked him to come to church. And then he gave him the information from our church about how he could learn to go to heaven. It's easy to be a preacher. Even a kid can do it. All you need to know is you need to know God and tell others about him. Look at what Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When Paul wrote this letter to Titus and to us, he described himself as a servant and an apostle or an ambassador. Are you a servant of God today? Are you living like an ambassador for Jesus? You should be. Then Paul reminded Titus of the hope of eternal life. Will you go to heaven when you die? How do you know? You will only go to heaven if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior. And finally, do you ever tell people about Jesus and the Bible? You should. 
you can be a preacher too. Thank you for watching Online Super Church today. I hope you will take the lesson and apply it to your life. If you would like to email me, I would love to hear from you. Have your parents send me an email at the address below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Every year, our church hosts the Northwest Children's Rally. This year's rally is scheduled for March 13th. One of the events is to memorize and quote the book of Titus, the book that we'll be studying. So I have a challenge for you children who are watching here on YouTube. For every 10 verses in the book of Titus that you memorize, I have a prize that I will send to you in the mail for your hard work. Now, in order to be eligible for this prize, you must be 10 years old or younger. After you memorize the 10 verses, you must say them to your parents and then have your parents email me at the email address below so that I can send you the prize. You have from today until March 13th, 2021 to complete this challenge. I hope you will work hard to hide God's word in your heart. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you'll join next week again for Online Super Church. In the meantime, make sure you tell your friends to watch too and to hit that thumbs up button. I'll see you in the next video.